Hello everyone, my name is Kyle, and thank you so much for watching this video. I'm here today to talk to you about the VizQL data service from Tableau, which I find extremely exciting. Um, so if you've not heard of it, the VizQL data service, or VDS, was actually first demoed at Tableau Conference 2023, uh, has been in development since, and what it really represents is a paradigm shift when we think about how we get to the data that we already know and trust in Tableau. It allows users or other applications to make programmatic requests for information via an API. Uh, all you need is a published data source. No longer do you need to have a view or a dashboard embedded and then make a specific call to get the data out of that. Um, you can get straight to your data. And when you really start to think about the possibilities that this opens up, you, your imagination can really want, run wild. You know, you can think of something as simple as, I want my users to have a specific subset of columns, and I want them to be able to download that without having to go to Tableau. Maybe I don't trust them with all of the data, or maybe uh, the cross-tab data that I, that I provide for them isn't at the level of granularity that they want, but I don't want to create a specific view just for download. Really, if you can think of it, if you can dream it up, the VDS will allow you to create that. So before we jump into the VDS, let's talk a little bit about VizQL in general. So if you've not heard of VizQL before, it stands for Visual Query Language, and it was actually created by Tableau. And it really is what makes Tableau Tableau. Now, I've got an article uh, on the screen behind me uh, that is, what is VizQL? from tableau.com. You can either Google it, but I'll also make sure to include a link to it. It explains a little bit uh, about what VizQL works, how it takes uh, your dr the driver for whatever database or data you're connecting to, optimizes it, runs queries, turns it into the visuals that we know and love. And all of this is happening while we drag our little green and blue pills around. This video isn't really meant to go too technically in deep on VizQL itself, but uh, having a little bit of background might kind of help you realize how big of a deal this is. This is something that was always locked to Tableau Desktop or Tableau Server or Tableau Cloud. And now we can tap directly into the power of VizQL in order to get, once again, the data that we already know, and we already love, we have our permissions around it, uh, we know how it works, we know what our users need. And this removes a, a layer, a level of effort a barrier even um, to taking this data and put it in, putting it into more real world or modern applications. So if you want to read more, I'll include the link to this article uh, in the description of this video, uh, but just giving you a heads up, basically when you hear VizQL, that's Tableau being Tableau. So VDS is taking that and taking it to brand new heights. Okay, now I've teased you enough, and I promise you I'm gonna get into examples of VDS in action. First, a disclaimer. You might notice I'm not going too technical in the details uh, as I go as I walk through with these examples. Um, that's just because VDS is still in a beta. Um, lots of it is probably likely to change, um, but I love this so much that when it is in GA, I will be sure to make another video with the specifics of how to do some of the things that you're seeing. But for now, what you're seeing is more of an art of the possible to give you ideas and more to come. So the first practical example that I have to show today is a report builder using VDS. Now, we at data people in the data fam, we don't enjoy when people just say, give me the Excel or give me this in a CSV. But that's life, right? And sometimes we want to do whatever we can to make that easier for them, to make it more controlled for them, um, while still making it look nice, right? There's nothing wrong with how Tableau looks, but lots of things look better on the web. So what you can see in front of you here is just a dummy little uh, pretend report builder that I put together here. This uses the, our everyone's favorite superstore data, data source. And you can see I've just got a few tiles here that my user can choose from. So I've got orders. Let's just click on generate here and see what this does. As it implies, it's going to give me a report here of just orders. 
and there's a lot of rows in this data, so I'm going to unvamping for a second to allow it to load in. And once I get that, you can see I have 10,192 rows. It says preview and then download to explore. I click on download and you might not be able to see, you might be able to see part of that screenshot, but it did just download a CSV of this data for me. Next report that I made available via this is customers, detailed information about customers. Now you'll see on this one, I've added a switch for repeat customers only. So if I generate the report without that on, we'll see what I end up getting is a report that has my customers, including things like the number of orders, their most recent count, most recent order, excuse me, uh, the very first order they ever placed. Maybe you're doing some, you want to do a targeted marketing campaign. Now I can search by this to show you that I have users in here, excuse me, customers in here that have only ever ordered from us once. So maybe we want that, but maybe we don't. Maybe I want my users to have the flexibility of only downloading of something with customers who've placed more than one order. I can build that right into my UI here. So if I change the switch, click on generate again, now I will get, I get a much smaller number, which maybe we want to look into that. Uh, now if I sort the lowest number of any customer uh, in my table here is two. And again, I hit download and I get this in a CSV. Last but not least, I have order information about regions. So uh, maybe I'm a general manager or a regional manager and I want to compare some of my managers uh, within a given region. So let's just say for the sake of argument here, I'm only interested in the West region. I can, again, using a custom UI that I put together, add or remove some checkboxes, click on generate, and now I get some tabular information, a preview of the information that will be in the CSV for only the region that I'm interested in, which in this case was the West. If I want to do West and Central, I can simply back out, change my selections, and now I will have information about both. The next example I have for you is something a bit more fun, something a bit more whimsical, uh, something that feels a bit more like a web application that you might have seen at some point in, in your career. So I'll go ahead and load this up here. So let's put on our imaginations here, and let's imagine we work for the DataFam library. Uh, and as you can see here, I've got a curated list of literature that I think everyone in the data fan would be interested in, right? So if we look at the individual cards here for each of the books, every data point that you see, the title, the author, the release year, the genre, all of that is coming from a data source on Tableau Cloud that, that I put together specifically for this. Now, it's fake data. However, you can see that I can create an experience that is so different from what I could do in Tableau or even by embedding Tableau, um, you know, including these spark lines, which are just native web spark lines. These are not embedded views of any kind. Um, this also gives me the ability to sort uh, things a little bit differently. So if I'm interested in um, what's most popular or if I want to sort by uh, the oldest things that are available here, uh, I can do that as well. And you can see um, I can really start to create an experience that doesn't feel anything like Tableau at all, even though it's powered 100% by Tableau. Now I can also, since this is for all intents and purposes, a web application, I can build a cart experience. Well, I want to read the Odyssey. It's been a long time. Same with Frankenstein. And then let's go with something a little bit more popular, right? So uh, let's give 1984 another shot. I didn't really like it as a kid, but we'll try it. It seems more relevant today, right? Mm. Uh, so once now that I've made my selections, I have a cart. I can come up here and I can check out, you know? Uh, maybe I don't want to read the Odyssey after all. So I can remove that. And now I've got an option that just says reserve two books, right? I hit reserve, sends the inf my implication. My application could send information to my backend system. It could even make API calls to my database uh, that's driving this data so that once I refresh, I number of available copies goes down or total number of checkouts goes up. You can really start to imagine the power that this unlocks because it's just data at this point. You're not dealing with all of the overhead that comes with creating Tableau views that would look, I, I'm not the kind of person that could make something in Tableau that looked this good. There are people that could do it, but it's a lot of work. And then when it comes to embedding that and having it interact with other applications, it's tough. Um, and, and this 
VDS really solves a lot of problems related to customization. Uh, as you can see here, uh, that's why it caught my attention so fast is I was always a huge fan of embedding. This is embedding on steroids, right? If it wasn't obvious, I'm a big fan of customization. I like creating bespoke experiences based on what my users want or uh, the kind of trendier way to, dis to display things, uh, whatever the case may be. Um, VDS to me is as big of a paradigm shift as something like parameter actions, right? If you think about, if you're a heavy desktop user, if you think about the level and methods of interactivity that that opened up within the desktop tool and within uh, views and dashboards uh, on server or cloud. This is similar in, in, for folks who do what I do, for folks who are interested in using the trusted data from Tableau with all the permissions that come with it and all the user management and all the great things that we love about Tableau, kind of freeing that data from those walls and being able to do literally whatever you want with it, power whatever experience you want. Um, that's what caught my eye immediately at TC23 when this, when this was being demoed. Just my mind just, I couldn't stop thinking of all the different things you could do with this um, and make it so much easier and less hacky than trying to do similar things with embedding. So I'm not everyone. Uh, there are going to probably be people who see this and think, mm, maybe I would never use this. But if you've ever had a case for embedding, if you've ever had a case for, man, it would be really nice to make this data visible to pe folks um, outside of the Tableau experience um, without having to keep it two places, without having to worry about two sets of permissions, VDS really enables this in a way that we've never really had before. So obviously that's a bit of a loaded question, right? I've spent this entire video talking about how the sky's the limit, your imagination, you're only really limited by your imagination, but I hope this got you thinking. And I would love to hear any ideas um, that you come up with about how you might use VDS. Even if you're not somebody who considers themselves a data dev or thinks you could, think you could implement your idea, I'd love, we'd still love to hear what you think of when you when you think about VDS. So there's a link in the description of this video to my corresponding blog post. There's also a link to the featured article on tableau.com. And in both places there, you'll find a link to a community space where you can share these ideas. And I can't wait to see what you come up with. So with that, we're going to wrap up the video today. As always, appreciate you tuning in. Uh, feel free to connect with me on any of my socials at kylejmassey.com, Twitter slash X, LinkedIn, Slack, etc. And thank you so much.